This is Azure Biosystems, and today we're going to go over Western blot quantitation. What is a quantitative Western blot, and how can you harness the power of Western blot quantitation using total stain Q from Azure Biosystems? So in today's webinar, we're going to go over what a quantitative Western blot is and what it can do for your research, and what makes a Western blot quantitative. What do you need to do to your Western blots in order to achieve a quantitative Western blot? We'll cover normalization and what that is and how that is essential to a quantitative Western blot. We're gonna cover housekeeping proteins and total protein stains. What are the differences? What are the pros and cons of each? And what is preferred in the industry today? And lastly, we'll go over total stain Q and how you can work that into your Western blotting protocol in order to achieve quantitative Western blot results. Historically, Western blots have been considered a qualitative experiment. They give you a yes or no answer on the presence of your protein. However, advancements in Western blotting technology and imaging technology has allowed a modern Western blots to actually be quantitative and not just qualitative. A quantitative Western blot will allow you to measure changes in your protein expression, to make relative comparisons between bands or treatments, or to even define absolute amounts of protein within your sample. So you can see that this turns Western blots from a qualitative answer to a very powerful tool. So if you are wanting to change your qualitative Western blots into a quantitative Western blot, what is the first step? Well, the first thing you need to integrate into your workflow is normalization. Normalization is the use of an internal control in order to correct for some unavoidable variations in your protein concentration across your samples and across your lanes. So these can often be due to the processing of your samples, treatment conditions, your transfer method, even just the loading of your samples can cause slight variations in your protein concentration across samples and across lanes. So in order to correct for those variations, we use an internal loading control as a reference within your sample. Most commonly, normalization is achieved through the use of an internal control and an internal reference. So this internal reference is used to help correct for the variability in both sample loading and transfer efficiency. With this internal reference, you can later create a ratio between your target and your internal reference, which will be used as your normalization factor. This normalization factor or ratio will allow you to make comparisons between your target proteins or your protein of interest or the bands of your protein of interest across different lanes, across different treatments, and will correct for any biases that may be caused through loading variations or other variations that I mentioned previously. In order for these comparisons to be accurate, the internal reference and the target protein must have a linear relationship. In other words, there must be a proportional linear signal relationship between the signal of your internal reference and your, the signal of your target protein. This is key to accurate normalization and key to accurate quantitative Western blotting. Probably the most common internal reference used for Western blot normalization is housekeeping proteins. Now, housekeeping proteins are a very simple way to integrate normalization into your Western blotting protocol because they are as simple as adding another primary antibody and secondary antibody into your current Western blotting protocol. Once you have integrated the detection of a housekeeping protein into your Western blotting protocol, you can then compare the expression of your housekeeping protein to your protein of interest and determine the ratio of, in this case, the ratio of protein A to protein B or protein C to protein B. And from there, you can determine your normalization factor or your normalization ratio and use that to normalize for any of the variances mentioned previously. The downfall of using housekeeping proteins as your normalization standard is that you are using a single indicator for sample loading. 
Many studies have shown that the expression of housekeeping proteins can actually be affected by experimental treatments or changes in experimental conditions, and this can negatively affect your ability to accurately normalize. Another downside to housekeeping proteins is that housekeeping proteins are generally highly expressed. This high expression can saturate your membrane or quickly saturate signal, especially if you are comparing to a protein with lower expression. You can imagine that when you are trying to compare a signal that is very strong to a signal that is much weaker, it is often difficult to achieve a linear response between that highly expressed protein and a much lower expressed protein of interest. In contrast, total protein stains use the combined signal from many proteins across the lane instead of just a single protein. This helps to account for and correct for changes in individual proteins due to experimental conditions and changes. Using the combined signal of an entire lane also helps to minimize and correct for potential saturation error due to individual protein signal saturations. Additionally, because you are staining the entire lane of protein across the entire membrane, total protein stains can also be used as a quality control for your protein transfer. You'll easily be able to visualize bubbles or uneven transfers across your membrane or any other transfer issues that may make your entire Western blot inaccurate or invalid. So when you compare the pros and cons of housekeeping proteins and total protein stains, it's very clear why many publications are recommending and preferring the use of total protein stains for a normalization standard. Accurate quantitative comparisons requires band normalization against an internal reference that does not change with the experimental conditions. That is much more consistently achieved with the use of a total protein stain. The good news is that incorporating a total protein stain into your Western blotting workflow is very simple. Total Stain Q in particular adds just a simple staining step after transfer and before blocking of your membrane. There are no special gels required and no special sample treatments prior to the running of your gel. After transferring your proteins to your membrane, you stain your membrane, image using the green channel or the safe stain channel of any fluorescent imager, and then continue onto your blocking step. There's no need to de-stain and it's compatible with both fluorescence and chemiluminescent Western blotting protocols. So what makes Total Stain Q so special? For one, it has a very linear response across a wide range of protein loads. From one microgram up to 50 micrograms of total protein per lane, Total Stain Q has a completely linear response making it very accurate and reliable for protein normalization. An accurate and reliable normalization means accurate and reliable quantitation. It's compatible with both chemiluminescence and fluorescence and allows the use of both NIR fluorescence channels. It can be used with PVDF and nitrocellulose and can be imaged using both CCD imagers and scanners with a green channel or a safe stain channel. The 20 minute stain procedure is simple and convenient and does not require any de-staining. And best of all, it is completely reversible. There is no covalent bond to proteins, which means that it does not leave a residual signal and it does not affect your detection. And it does not interfere with antibody interactions and therefore will have no effect on the signals of your protein of interest. If you are ready to integrate total protein normalization and total stain Q into your Western blotting protocol in order to achieve quantitative Western blots, visit azurabiosystems.com or scan the QR code to request a sample or to request a free consultation with an Azure specialist.